Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of West World. Last week I was down in Britain visiting a geriatric hospital and speaking to the elder people and finding out what happened after lights out. This week my investigation has led me to the Dutch North Sea, a place where men of steel have to work day in day out every day of the year. We've come here today to meet some of those people, talk to them, find out what their problems are and see what it really is like out here. There's been a lot of talk in the newspapers lately about homosexuality on oil rigs. Whether it's your or not, I'm here to find it. So let's now go down into the bowels of the Pentagon for oil rig and talk to some of the men and find out what life is really like on here. I'm standing in the hallway of the accommodation of the Pentagon 4. This is where the men come after a busy day's work up on the drill floor. They come here to relax, to sleep, and most important of all, to wash that mud off their bodies, off their sweaty bodies. Now, let's go in the washroom and see if we can talk to somebody who may be having a shower at this very moment and ask him what it feels like, after a hard day's work, to come down here and relax for a while. Okay, let's now go in and see what's happening. Well, it seems somebody is at this moment having a shower. So when he comes out, we will be able to talk to him and see what his views are on showering. Of course, a marvelous experience after that hard time up working. I do believe he has finished his shower now. He could come this way. And, uh, excuse me, sir. Oh, 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 there seem to be two of them. There seem to be two of them in the same shower unit. <laughs> Well, they're obviously saving water, and they were obviously in a hurry to get back to work. So, there's nobody left in here now. Where do we go from here? Good evening, and here we are outside Cap 14. It is 11 o'clock at night. The men will soon be getting up for work. We expect the slip to come down any time now to wake up the men in cabin 14, ready to start their work at 12 o'clock after having had shower and their evening meal. He should be coming through here, through this door, to wake up the boys at 11 o'clock. We're hoping to see him, and maybe we'll be able to film him going about his duties. And here he is. Good evening. Good evening. Do you believe you're going in to wake the men up? This is correct. Would you mind if we followed you? I do not. Okay. Well, let's come this way and see what really happens inside a cabin. The lights go on. Oh dear, there seem to be more than two men in that bar. <laughs> have you ever seen this before? Not at all. Not at all? Well, I don't think I ever have, and I don't think I ever do. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Hello again. Our investigation has now brought us up to the nerve center of the Pentagon 84 oil rig. This is where the operations are carried out to make sure the rig does not sink. The man in here is a man who is alert 12 hours a day. Drink does not come into his life. He knows that one false move from him or one moment's lapse of concentration could mean death for everybody. Let's go in and say hello to him, although I doubt he'll be able to spare much of his time. He is indeed a busy man. And now as I speak, he will be busy filling out sturdy forms, making sure that we're in safe hands. Let's have a word with him. Well, he seems to have dozed off. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. You are the control room operator. Hello. Uh, get this bottle out of the... Get, get, get the bottle out of the picture. Um, excuse me, sir. Uh, Could you tell us what your job involves? Oh, uh, well, uh, he seems to be... Uh, totally in control of the situation, we are indeed in safe hands. Oh dear, we seem to be taking a slight list to starboard. I better see what I can do. No, not that one. Never mind. We'll go elsewhere to look for more adventures.
come down to the mudroom and uh, my investigation now is going to be to find out exactly how safe it is working on such a place as an oil rig. Safety, of course, is upmost in anybody's mind, as I think you'll see from my report. At the moment, we have a man sweeping the floors, constantly surveying the mud levels to make sure there is no chance of a blowout. And the forklift truck driver, who will soon be here, had to undergo a three-month training course in order to get his license to drive the fork truck. He is now here, and he's going to go about his work. Let's follow him and see, see him starting up his truck. And I will maybe have a couple of words with him. to come a bit closer, cameraman, so we can maybe say a couple of words to him. There he goes. Off on his voyage to the other end of the mud room. Oh, my God, what has happened? There seems to have been a terrible accident. Oh, my God. Somebody has been run over, and uh, I think his boots are off. There seems to be something terrible. We better call a stretcher bearer quickly. We'll get a couple of stretcher bearers to come along now and get him taken up to the surgery. It's one of the best surgeries in the North Sea, and I do believe there will be two stretcher bearers here very, very shortly. They're on their way now. The man looks in a very poor state. He looks dead. He's not moving at all. His boot has fallen off. And here come the stretcher bearers now. They're on the scene without delay, and they're putting him in the stretcher. <laughs> And they will now cut him off. They will now... Welcome back to part two of Wicker's World. I'm still on the Pentagon 84, and this time I've come down to the mud room to find out what happens down here. It is one of the largest rooms on the rig. There is a lot of activity going on. A lot of people are often working down here under dangerous conditions. Caustic and forklift trucks going around where everybody has to be very careful and make sure they are vigilant at all times. There is one of the Derek men working here at the moment, surveying his mud pits, pits and keeping the floor clean. Any minute now, we should have the truck driver coming through to uh, lift some pallets. And here he is. Good evening. Good evening. And there he goes. He's off to... Um, get in his forklift truck. I do believe you have to take a three-month course before you're allowed to drive one of these things. And of course, they are all experts. He is adjusting his truck now. He will be going down to the other end of the mudroom to pick up some mud products. So now let's follow the truck driver as he makes his way down to the other... Oh, my God, that seems to have been something terribly wrong. The derrickman who was sweeping the floor has, uh, has uh, seemed to have been run over. We'd better get some stretcher bearers out here pretty quickly. And here they come now, the stretcher bearers. They are straight on the scene, straight away. Oh, my dear. The, the, this man, he's had a three-month course in driving trucks, and he still manages to run the derrickman over. It doesn't seem to matter. They'll be, be able to get another one out on Tuesday. But what are they going to do till then? They better now take him up to the hospital and see what the ship surgeon can do. This is the most terrible thing I've ever, I've ever witnessed in my life. And we better go up and see what's going on in the hospital because there has, does seem to have been the most absolutely dreadful accident. Let's now go up and see what's happening out there. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. We've now come up to the hospital where the surgeon is busily making out his diagnosis and I think it could be pretty nasty. We're going to ask to see if we can go in and witness what surely will have to be major surgery. We will now go forward, knock on the door because he might be busy. But if, uh, if you are squeamish, I suggest you turn off your television set.
Good evening. You are indeed the ship's surgeon. Yes, yes, yes. Can I help you? Yes, we do believe that there is a very badly injured man yes. in here. We would like... Yes, well, I'm very busy just now. I'm just about to remove his liver. <laughs> Could we come in and what? Yes, if you want. OK, let's go in and see what's happening. The man is indeed looking very ill. He's been run over by a truck. What a horrible sight. He has indeed had his liver removed. <laughs> We'd better give it him. Oh, dear. Need to stitch him up. Disposing this. OK, thank you very much. I'm sure he's going to be all right soon. He looks as though he is in very, very deep pain at the moment. He's been given oxygen. He's under deep sedation, although it doesn't seem to be working very well. The surgeon has done a good job of removing the liver in the quickest possible time before it became infected and clot. We will now leave them to finish off the operation and find out whether the man is going to be able to live and see another day and drive another forklift. OK, let's now leave. ten o'clock in the evening. I'm standing in the restaurant. After a long day's filming, it's good to finally arrive here and get something to eat. And from the stories I've heard, the food on here is very good. Let's have a look at the menu and see what we've got for us tonight. It certainly looks very good. It's a Sunday menu. Celery and mushroom soup to start. Fried and breaded scampi, chicken Kiev, and fresh juicy liver with the following vegetables, chipped garden peas and julienne of cats. It certainly sounds more than a roadside cafe meal. So, as we look around, we see through here we have the kitchen where all this food is busily prepared during the day while the men are working. I have been invited by the men to have meals with them and I'm going to enjoy it very much. I'll now go and take my place at the table. I will see you after the first course. Well, I must say, I very much enjoyed my first meal on the Pentagon 84. Very tasty and very kind of you to give me the last piece. And here comes the steward now. Turn your words. Let me go again. 